Today I want to talk about a Goldbach's conjecture, uh, which is the, one of the big unsolved problems in maths. So Goldbach's conjecture says that every even number greater than two can be written as a sum of two primes. Okay, so well, we can do a quick example of what that means. So we'll start with the four and I can write it as a sum of two primes, two and two would work. Let's take the next even number, six. Well, that's two primes, three and three. And then eight, that's a bit more interesting because it's three and five. And then 10, it could be five and five, or well, I guess it could be three and seven as well. So there's, there's more than one way of doing it. And then so on, right? The next number is 12, which is gonna be what, five and seven and so on. So that's what Goldback conjecture says, right? Every even number greater than two can be written as two primes. Goldbach's conjecture, so it's been checked to very high numbers, but unproven so far. Well, very famous, boring, who cares? So let's try and challenge ourselves today. Let's try and restrict ourselves a little bit to the twin primes. So what's a, a twin prime? A twin prime is a prime number that has a twin, and a twin means there's another prime number two steps away. So let's write down the twin primes. Some, well, there's an infinite number of them, isn't there? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll make a start. So the twin primes are three and five. Then you have five and seven. Then you have 11 and 13. Then you have 17 and 19. Then we have 29 and 31 and so on. Yes, well, we think there's infinitely many of those. So let's try an even number, but just using twin primes this time. Because some of these are already twin primes. So six is already done with twin primes. Eight was already done with twin primes anyway, so it was 12. So let's, let's try some other number. You can, so, you, you can use the same twin prime, can you? Yeah, so we are just picking from the sequence of twin primes. They don't have to be twins themselves. They don't have to be a pair of twin primes. They can just be from anywhere in that sequence. Okay, let's do 14. So 14, okay, three plus 11. So those are two twin primes, they're from my list, three and 11 makes 14. Or you could have done seven plus seven. Or I could do seven plus seven. It doesn't have to be unique. There could be more than one way of doing it. I could do 16, which is, oh, three plus 13 if I wanted to. Or it could be five plus 11 because these are in my twin prime list. Do 42. Okay, let's do that. I don't know what 42 is. Let's do See it. if you can figure it out. 42. Got some live mathematics here, people. Okay, 42 is going to be, there. we've got some options here. So uh, it's going to be 31 plus 11. Managed it. 31 plus 11 can be written as two twin primes. They don't have to be partners. They don't have to be a twin prime pair. So the Goldbach conjecture for twin prime says that every even number can be written as a sum of two twin primes with 35 exceptions. 35 exceptions, which is enough for me to write down. These are going to be even numbers that can't be written as two twin primes. Let's have a look at these exceptions. Two is an exception. Four is an exception. Well, they're kind of small. That's not surprising. The next one is 94, then 96, then 98, then 400, 402, 404, 514, 516, 518, 784, 786, 788, 904, 906, 908, 1114, 1116, 1118, 1144, 1146, 1148, 1200, and 64, 1266, 1268, 1354, 1356, 1358, 3244, 3246, 3248, 4204, 4206, 4208, and that is the last exception. I love a finite list. The obvious question is, you said that's a finite yeah. list. Proven? De shut uh, the gate? That's a very good question. No, that's what we found so far and we have checked up to 20 billion. 
So we have checked very large numbers and we have only found these 35 exceptions, right? With the biggest one being 4,208. So it appears that this might be a finite list. If we do find an exception somewhere way out there, again, amazing, love it. That would be big news, I'd love it, but it seems unlikely. I love a finite list because it sort of sits somewhere between there being no exceptions and there being infinitely many exceptions. So the, the conditions are just right so that it sort of fits somewhere in between those two worlds. So I kind of like that. Yeah, there is an argument then to say that this is all of them, all the exceptions. So it's the same argument they have for Goldbach's conjecture. So Goldbach's conjecture says, you know, every even number can be written as two primes, except two, right? Because two would be an exception, but that's because it's really small. So the argument is that it actually gets easier to write numbers as a sum of two primes when the numbers get bigger. If you look at how many possibilities you have, yeah, the number of possibilities actually increase. So for 10, we actually did it. For 10, there were two possible ways of writing 10 as two prime numbers. Uh, for 100, though, it's, there's eight. There's eight ways of doing it. For 1,000, it's 37 ways of doing it. So the number of possibilities just gets bigger. So we can say it seems unlikely that we're going to find some sort of exception in the big numbers. Right? Again, not proven, might not be true, but it just seems unlikely, okay? That's not a proof, it's just an argument why it might be true. So if there are exceptions, they're all gonna be small numbers, right? Where there's fewer primes to play around with. For Goldbach's conjecture, we haven't found any exceptions, right? Apart from the two. So yeah, for the twin prime Goldbach's conjecture, it's the same sort of argument, okay? So for the really big numbers, We've just got so many twin primes to play with, right? It becomes, it becomes unlikely to find exceptions with the big numbers. But with the small numbers, we actually have exceptions. I want to show you a near miss, because it's kind of fun. 24,098, and that can be written as two twin primes. It's 11,719 plus 12,379. So those are twin primes that add up to 24,098 but there's only one way of doing it. And that's why it's a near miss. It's almost an exception. So most of the time you can do it multiple ways. So most of the time- Even with the it, twins. Yeah, even with the twins, you can do it multiple ways. This is the biggest near miss we've got. After that, they're not near misses, right? There's more than one way of doing it, right? And the exceptions are the ones that have zero ways of doing it. For Goldbach's conjecture, with just the primes, the original Goldbach's conjecture, there aren't any near misses. So if you look at, the numbers, there's just multiples all over the place. Nothing like this at all. If we prove the Goldbach conjecture for twin primes, it would automatically prove the original Goldbach's conjecture. So if we prove that every even number is the sum of two twin primes, then obviously it's gonna be the sum of two primes. Twin primes are primes. The only thing we would have to do is check the exceptions. So the exceptions are these 35 exceptions, and we would check that those can be written as two primes, which they can, right? They're small enough to check. If we prove the twin prime Goldbeck conjecture, mm. won't we also prove the twin prime conjecture? Oh, brilliant question. What a good question, Braden. No, you're absolutely right. Well spotted. So imagine, so the twin prime con Conjecture, we should say what that is, that there's infinitely many twin primes, another thing that hasn't been proven. But imagine the opposite. Imagine there were finitely many twin primes. If there was finitely many twin primes, there would be a biggest twin prime. Well, I'm going to call it T. Uh, that means a number like 2T, which is an even number, would be a sum of two twin primes. It would be the biggest number we could write as a sum of twin primes. So this next one, 2T plus 2, would be an even number that we can't write as a sum of two twin primes. Be out of reach. It would be out of reach, but if we prove that our Goldback conjecture for twin primes is true, it shouldn't be out of reach. Therefore, yes, you would prove there has to be infinitely many twin primes. Wow, imagine if that's how they prove the twin prime conjecture. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend it. So I would say proving the twin prime Goldback conjecture 
it's going to be hard, and I'd say even harder than proving the gold back conjecture in the first place. And the twin prime conjecture. And the twin prime conjecture in the first place. But it is a possible way of doing it. I'm not expecting that's the way these things are going to be proven. Hey everyone, if you're the sort of clever, curious, sparky person who we imagine watches number file, and you're at the start of a career, maybe you're looking at internship opportunities, then you really need to check out today's episode sponsor, Jane Street. If you haven't heard of Jane Street, they're a quantitative trading firm with offices all around the world. They're at the cutting edge of things like machine learning, distributed systems, programmable hardware, statistics, and Jane Street are currently taking applications for internships in quantitative trading, software engineering, research, and plenty more areas. It's pretty broad. The summer internships are in New York, London, and Hong Kong. You'll do amazing work, meet fascinating people, and the internship program also includes cool social events, guest speakers, all hosted in their world-class, high-tech offices. I've been to some of them, they're very cool places to work. In addition to a salary for the summer, Jane Street will also cover all your flights and accommodation. It's an amazing opportunity. Last year's interns came from 22 different countries and all sorts of backgrounds. You don't need to know about finance, they just want people who are curious, collaborative, the sorts of people who I imagine might be watching these videos. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in the world, you really should check out some of these opportunities. There'll be a link in the video description. Check out the links below, either in the comments or in the description, for more about the Twin Prime Goldback Conjecture. There's more from this interview with James, including why these numbers, these exceptions, come in triples. I'll also include some links to other videos we've made about Twin Primes and the original Goldback Conjecture.